You know who the very first testimony is? If we were having a court of law, who would be the first witness on the stand? When Paul wrote his account in 1 Corinthians 15, the first name he listed was Peter. Well, we know Peter is an admitted liar. The Bible tells it very clearly that Peter, when it counted the most, when he had promised to be loyal to Jesus, Peter lied, basically lied under oath to these officials saying, no, I never knew Jesus. And he did it three times. What kind of credibility can you give to that testimony? He would be laughed off the stand in a court of law. This is the earliest thing we have written. This was written around the year 55, which is a quarter of a century after the events. Jesus, if he was executed, was executed in the late 20s, maybe the year 30. This was the first thing we have written 25 years later, written to a people in Corinth, which is more than a thousand miles away. Paul writes, Jesus was buried, he rose, and then he appeared to people. First to Peter, then to James, and then he obviously edits it because he said he appeared to me. So he's, he's monkeying with the text a little bit. That word buried is not a tomb. The word tomb or sepulcher didn't come until Mark, which was around the year 70. What they did with executed cr criminals in those days was they just buried them in a common pit. If there's no mention of a tomb, there can hardly be an empty tomb if there's no mention of a tomb in this passage. And then uh, Paul said that he raised. That word raised is not the word resurrected. Resurrected is anistimi or anastasis. He used the word egiro, which means that he raised. It's the word for waking up. All through the New Testament, you find that word egiro. When Jesus was asleep in the boat, the disciples went and woke him up. No one thinks he resurrected from the bottom of a boat. He could have used resurrected, but he didn't. He used the spiritual word, egiro. Jesus was buried and then he rose, he ascended. And then the word appeared, ophi, he appeared to these people. That word is the word used for visionary uh, appearances. That is not a bodily appearance. Uh, remember the story of the transfiguration? When Jesus, James and Peter went to see Jesus transfigured and guess who appeared to them? Moses and Elijah, remember that story, Christians? Well, that's the same word, ophi. Moses and Elijah appeared to Peter using that same word. You think Moses and Elijah appeared bodily? Of course not. They were having this spiritual experience. Otherwise, we should look for the empty tomb of Moses, right? And Paul's using these words that were used by the primitive Christians, not for a bodily resurrection, but for a spiritual resurrection, ascension into heaven, where the body just stayed where it was. 